Hi everybody, it's Lisa Stoll, the uh, librarian at Warren County Community College. Uh, this video is about the journal article assignment that some students get for um, psych classes and social classes. So I have a whole page set up on the library's website to show you um, a lot of the information you're going to need. So to get there, click on the library link from the home page. And then there is a tab here that says journal article assignment. So you click on that tab. And this is everything I'm going to be talking about today. So you can always go and view this at any time um, to see what it is I covered and uh, if you have any further questions. So a couple of things on this page. Um, first, you are going to be looking for a very specific kind of article. So the one thing you need to do is make sure you, three, you read carefully through the assignment before you start. And if you're not sure what it is you're looking for, make sure you ask your professor for help and clarification. And the articles you're going to be looking for are going to be found through the library's databases, through the EBSCO Discovery Service database. So um, the articles are very specific. They have to be a study that has been conducted by somebody, um, and it has to be about that study. It can't be like a conversational piece or an article that's meant to inform. These articles have been done um, to explain and in detail um, these studies that have been done. So when you're looking at the articles, that I'm going to show you in a minute, you need to look for articles that include sections such as methods, participants, analysis, results, discussion. You need to look for those headings within the article. And if it doesn't explain most of these areas, you're probably not looking at the right kind of article. So that's important to keep in mind. So to get to the library's databases, they're under library online resources. And I'm going to actually open it in a new tab so we can flip back and forth. And here is a video tutorial about how to use the databases. Um, so if you're a first time user, you haven't used the databases before, um, there is a video here that explains uh, and shows you how to use them. Now for this assignment and most assignments that you're gonna have at WCCC, you're gonna use EBSCO Discovery Service. That is a giant database uh, filled with a bunch of smaller databases. So you only have one site, you, you go there and you can look through all these other databases. Gale Interactive Human Anatomy is more for A&P students or nursing students or um, human bio students or the medical assisting students. You know, it's very specific uh, to the discipline of anatomy. So you probably, unless you're in any of those other classes, you won't be using this uh, for your research for most classes. Uh, you're gonna wanna use EBSCO Discovery Services and especially for the general article assignment, you definitely are gonna be using EBSCO. So you just click on, you can see the title here is a link. So you just click on that link. Now, when you go into the databases, it's gonna ask you for a username and password. This is gonna be the username and password you use to log into your student email. It is not the same as your My Warren account, okay? And generally, it's your first initial last name. And then if you haven't created a password on your own, the password starts out as your two digit month of birth, two digit day of birth, birth excuse me, last four of your social security number. And once you put that in there, you go ahead and log in. And it's going to give you a basic search box. Now, you need to search for a term based on what your assignment has said. So for psychology, you might be, be told that you need to write about something that you've already covered in class or something of interest to you that you found in the book. Now, you can't just search for psychology, and I'll show you why. When I put in just psychology as a keyword, I get almost 3 million results. And that's a lot of results to have to, to um, sift through to find the kind of articles you're looking for. So try to make sure you pick something you're actually interested in. So um, something that you, you know, want to research, something that, that you find interesting in the psychology field or the sociology field, depending on uh, which class you're in. So I'm actually going to put in attention. Deficit Disorder, AD, all right, and hit search. Doo, doo, doo. So now I only have 300,000 articles. I mean, it's still a lot of articles, but it's not nearly as much as I had when I just put in psychology. Um, so what I wanna do after I've gotten these results is I wanna go over to the left-hand side where it says refine results, and I'm gonna break down my, my results even further to get the kind of articles that I need. So here is under, in this box right here, is your current search, all right? 
under expanders, it tells you that you want to search within the full text of the article. So if, if attention deficit disorder is mentioned within the full text of the articles, I'm going to get those articles. Um, apply equivalent subjects works kind of like a thesaurus. So if there's something close to or around um, attention deficit disorder, it's going to pick up those. And under limiter, it says it's limiting um, my results to those that are available in the library collection. This should always be here. Do not uncheck it. And under your limit two, you can see it's checked here because that means you're going to find um, articles that you have full text to. If you don't have access to the full text of the article, it really doesn't do you a whole lot of good. So you want to make sure that that's always in your limiters and that you don't really mess with that. So going down under limit two, if you were to limit it to catalog only, it would give you the actual physical books we have in the library. So you don't want to choose that because you're looking for a journal article. You do want your journal article to be peer reviewed. Now, just as a hint about peer reviewed, if you ever have a professor tell you that they want you to find scholarly or peer reviewed journals, that means they're telling you without telling you that they want you to use the library's databases because this is the only place available to you that you can actually limit your results to peer reviewed articles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. All right, so it, once I click on that, it repopulates my results, and now I have just over um, a little over 200,000 results. So I'm, I'm paring down my results a little bit. Now again, under limit two, you wanna limit the publication date. So for fields like any kind of science or soft science, like psychology, sociology, education, things like that, you want the most up-to-date information. So the general rule of thumb is that you only wanna look at articles that have been published within the last five years. You can see by looking here that there are articles going back to 1922 about attention deficit disorder. So that's way, way too big of a span. So what I do is I highlight the number and I just go ahead and put in, oops, sorry, that was my bad. My number locks wasn't on. Silly, silly, put my num locks back on. 2015, and then they already show you that the, the most recent articles are from 2020. So 2015 to 2020, I hit enter. And now look, I have 58, almost 59,000 articles. Again, still a lot of articles, but much fewer than before. So we can refine this a little further. So under source types, you wanna go ahead and limit it to academic journals. So reports are not gonna give you the kind of results you need for this particular um, assignment. Reviews are definitely not gonna give you what you need because that's usually book reviews or journal article reviews, nothing to do with actual studies. Magazines we want to avoid because we're looking for things that are peer-reviewed and scholarly, scholarly coming from academic journals. And books, again, we're looking for journal articles, so that's not really going to give us what we want. So you go ahead and click on academic journals. And again, it repopulates re the results. And every time we click on another thing, this current search box gets bigger because we're adding more uh, information to it in terms of limiters. The other thing that you can do if you want to is under subject, if you click on subject, and then at the bottom of that box, click on show more, it's gonna allow you to break down your search topic even further. So let's see, I can break it down into all these different categories. And what I like to do normally is to go ahead and put it, if you click name, it'll give it to you in uh, alphabetical order. I find that a little easier. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So maybe I just want to look at attention deficit disorder in children. So I can click on children. But let's see what else is here. Mm. I definitely want to also maybe break it down to just psychology. So that should be an option. There you go. Psychology. And I hit update. Do do do. Now again, we're down to just over 8,000 articles. So what adding all these different things on the left does is it refines your results to something more manageable. And again, you still have a lot of articles, but it's much fewer than before. And they're gonna be much more specific and geared toward the kind of article that you need for this um, particular assignment. Now, as you're going through, I'll be honest with you, some of these uh, results might be too specific. And that does happen sometimes, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so if, that, if you find that the results are too specific and you're not looking at what you want, 
in this um, current search box, you can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to knock off children. I'm just going to look at it from a psychological point of view. And it'll give you um, more results back, but they might not be as specific before. You might see the same articles in both, and that's because originally we had chosen both psychology and children. So let's go down here. Uh, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> All right, so let's say I find this article looks interesting. Now, one thing you can tell just by looking at this information about this article is how many pages it is. Now, that's important because for this assignment, you don't want an article that's like 15, 20, 30, 40 pages. That's not the purpose of this assignment. The assignment is to write a page and a half to two pages about this article uh, and summarize what the article is saying. So you don't want something that's so long that it becomes unmanageable. The max page numbers or the max amount of pages for this assignment for the journal article you're choosing should be 12. All right, anywhere from eight to 12 should be good. So the other thing I can say is that in looking at this, it has diagrams, it has charts. That can be a good sign because when you're um, displaying the results of a study, oftentimes researchers will use diagrams and charts. So I can click on the title here. And what it does is it takes me to what they call the detailed record page. And this gives me all the bibliographic information. In other words, it gives me the authors, it gives me the source of where it was published, when it was published, the volume, the issue number, and that's all information you need to make a um, references citation uh, in APA. It also gives you some of the subjects, and sometimes, but not always, it will give you an abstract. Now, just in looking at this abstract, what, what you know, jumps out at me is that it says the present study. Aha, I am looking for a study, right? That's what you guys are looking for. So that's good news. The next thing you should do is look at the PDF full text if it's available. HTML full text is fine, but it really is just a web page, whereas the PDF full text will display it like it was originally published. So you go to PDF full text. Dun, 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 it comes open. Now here is the paper. Now remember, I said that we need to find articles that have these subject headings within the article, okay? The article needs to describe the methods used in the study, who the participants were, how they analyzed the data, the results of that analysis, and then a discussion. Sometimes some of these might be combined under one heading, and sometimes one might be missing, but as long as the majority of these things are here, that's the kind of article you're looking for. So let's check this article. If I scroll down, there's the abstract. Generally, it will start with an introduction about the subject, as a whole, and then it goes into um, what the study is trying to discover or what they're trying to prove or disprove or you know what it is they want to do with the study. Look, I have a method section that includes participants, measures, which is how they, um, how they were able to uh, determine uh, scientifically uh, the results they've gotten, and then they go into results. Data analysis, this is exactly the type of article you want. Okay, as you go through discussion, perfect. All right, so this is the kind of article that you wanna find uh, for your research article assignment. It gives me, I muted myself, that was weird. It gives me all of these areas that I needed to look for in an article. That's awesome, that's exactly what I want and that's what you should be looking for. Um, so, a couple of things uh, on here, on this page, the journal article assignment tab, I do tell you that you wanna make sure you're looking for scholarly or peer-reviewed journals. You wanna make sure it's always available in the, lib in the library collection and the publication date should be a five-year range. So just keep in mind that this is here in case you need to refer back to it. Now, the one thing I advise you to do is once you find an article that looks good, you need to make sure you save this article somehow. And you have a couple of options for that. You can always print the article, all right, but I would recommend downloading the article to a thumb drive or to your computer, your laptop, your device if you can, and it'll download it as a PDF file. All right, so that's great because then you have it there and it's already done for you. The other option that the database um, provides is you can save it to your Google Drive. So if you have a Google Drive account, you can save the article again as a PDF directly to your Google Drive account and then it's there whenever you need to look at it. Okay, there's that option as well. 
Um, but make sure you save it because it's really hard sometimes to go back into the databases after you found an article to try to refine that article. And some professors might ask you to share the article with them uh, when you turn in your assignment. So keep in mind, having an, a copy of that article, whether it's a physical copy, a PDF, something, is really good. The other thing that the databases offers you is right here, this little golden piece of paper, is the cite button. So if you click on that, it's going to bring up your citation styles, and it'll cite the article for you. For this assignment, you're going to be using APA 7, and the databases are, in fact, using APA 7. So that is there for you. Um, the only thing I can see right now, just looking at this, is that um, first, in APA, all, um, all words in the title of the journal article should be lowercase uh, after the first word, or if it's a specific um, uh, synonym, or excuse me, if it's, if it's a, um, oh my goodness, my brain is hurting me. You know what I mean. If it's like ADHD, which stands for something else, or if it's a um, proper noun of some sort. So what you can do from here is copy this into a Word document. Because you're going to have to cite at the end of your article, or at the end of your um, assignment, you're going to have to cite on a references page the, your article. So taking that citation when you find the article is a good idea because then you have it done for you and you don't have to go back and try to find it or you don't have to try to create it on your own. So I can just paste it in here. Now I can't, I don't know if you can see, but it has like a gray background in here, which we don't want. That's not cool. We don't want to keep it like that. So when you paste, go to that control with the drop down menu and do keep text only. Now that has taken away the formatting, but that's okay and I'll tell you why. It is so easy to format a journal article from the databases. So I'm going to show you two things. First, you have a resource available to you um, on the library's uh, website, the APA 7 style formatting tab. If you click on there and you go to databases, it will give you these different examples. So let me see how many articles, I mean, how many authors? One, two, three authors. So I go to databases articles with more than three authors. So I guess with two authors, but more than three authors. So it would be this one. Sorry if that's a bit confusing, but that's the one you want to pick. And what this does is it gives me the formatting for a reference list entry for a um, article, a general article from the databases that um, you have found so that you can cite it correctly. Uh, it gives you how to do the in-text citation if you're doing a direct quote or if you're paraphrasing or summarizing. And then it gives you an example of what that should look like. So just by going on this example alone, you can go ahead and format this entry to look like that one. Let's see, let's make it like that. Bring this up. So one thing I can see first of all, and keep in mind, the, the reference, or excuse me, the citation entries in the databases might sometimes be wrong in terms of formatting, but normally it will give you almost all of the information you need for that citation. There are humans, people that are entering the information for these citations that are then used um, when the computer generates the citation. So sometimes they don't do it correctly. Sometimes they're not hip on APA. They don't know what's going on. So that happens sometimes, but that's okay because that's why I've given you this example. So the authors are last name, first initials, just like that. Before the last author, I use the ampersand sign, right? 2018 period, psychological mechanisms. And now this is when you can see the lowercase here. All right, the first word is capitalized. This acronym, ah, that's the word I couldn't remember before. The acronym stays capitalized because it's an acronym. But symptoms and physical child abuse risk should all be lowercase. Now to do that, there's this little trick that a student taught me. If you highlight it and then go to the big A, little a, you can make it all lowercase. Now notice there's punctuation here, there's a colon. So what you do after that punctuation is again, the first word is capitalized and A and the do count as the first words and everything else is lowercase. So again, I highlight what needs to be lowercase. I go to the little a, big A, and I go to lowercase. 
All right, so let's look back at the example. All right, we've done that. Now the title of the journal article and the volume number are in italics. So I go back to my little thing here. The name of the thing is Journal of Child and Family Studies. The volume is 27. So I italicize those and then it gives me the page numbers. Now you'll notice in this example, there's no URL. In general, when you are citing a journal article from the databases, as long as it has the information here, the volume, the issue, and the page numbers, you do not need to include any kind of uh, DOI or hyperlink. It is not needed now for APA 7. You don't need to do that. So because this article does have the volume, issue, and page numbers, I can get rid of this. It doesn't need to be there. Now, let's say, though, for example, that it doesn't give me, for whatever reason, the page numbers, or it doesn't give me the volume number. So let's say I don't have the volume number, or the issue number, excuse me. Then I would need to include either the DOI or, the, or a hyperlink. Now, the DOI, bum bum, stop, go away. You can look back at this article, go back to that detailed record, and see if there is a DOI on here. Sometimes it will tell you. Now look, there is a DOI right here on this page. So what you do is you copy that DOI, open up a new web page, put that DOI in, and there it is. Now the reason you do that is because the DOI now has to be a um, hyperlink. So normally DOI.107 slash S, that whole thing by itself is not a hyperlink. But if we click on the actual journal, you can see it gives us the HTTPS, oops, that's too many HTTPSs, oops, let's go back here. I can just take it from here. Or you can just go ahead and take the DOI number, add HTTPS colon backslash backslash, doi.org backslash, right? Yep, and then paste in that DOI number. And again, make sure the formatting all stays the same. So when you're formatting your references page, you're gonna have your reference on there for the journal article that you've chosen. It's gonna say references at the top. Now the other thing you need to do, and it shows you here, is that you need to have that hanging indent and it needs to be double spaced. So that's easy enough to fix in Word. Once you have all the formatting done, you just highlight it, go to this little paragraph drop down here. Now for the hanging indent, under indentation, you pick under special hanging, and then under spacing, before and after should always be zero, and line spacing will be double. And there you go. And that's how you would copy and paste that citation for your journal article directly into the databases. Uh, and that's about it. That's what you need to know for your journal article assignment. It um, shouldn't give you too much of a headache, but if it does, just keep in mind that not only can you ask your professor questions, but you can always ask me questions. You can email me at wcclibrary at warren.edu. You can call me and leave a voicemail message at 908-835 two, three, three, seven. Just please make sure you leave me your name and your phone number so I can call you back. Um, and there's also the library's live virtual circulation desk. And that means that on these days, during these times, I am available to chat with you live on GoToMeeting. All you have to do is uh, click on this link here and it'll take you to the GoToMeeting. But outside of these hours, the link won't work because I'm not going to be there. But during these hours, I, can, I will be there to answer any questions you may have. Okay? So good luck and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. All right, take care, bye.